All right, let's get this party started. <laughs> Hopefully we get some people in soon. So we don't have to just stand here looking at each other. I don't know, I don't want to look at you any more than I have to. <laughs> oh, went live. What's up, Chance? Oh, you got the update time? Yeah, I got okay. the update. That's good, nice. that we're actually getting the updates. This is good. <clears throat> All right. Back for another weekly live stream. What is this, our, like, our fifth one? Fourth one? Fourth. Since we came back yeah. from the trip, that's pretty good. Yeah, hopefully you guys are liking it. Yeah. <laughs> Throw some questions in the comment box. Let us know if you guys have any questions for us or, uh, you know. Or just want to say or, hi. Or we'll just start uh, jibber jabbering. <laughs> uh, Chance says, I love you so much. <laughs> Thanks, Chance. <laughs> love you too, man. <clears throat> What's going on, Richard? Ariane, Adam, Charles is always here. Charles. Love you, buddy. Uh, number one. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I don't know what he was thinking about that other guy. <laughs> I think it was Gene. <laughs> I mean, I love Oh, it. look at this guy. Try to start shit already. <laughs> Gene's great. Don't get me wrong. But Charles, you're our number <laughs> one, buddy. <laughs> oh, you're killing me, Smalls. I don't know how he jumped ship so fast, but I won't. Are we going to collab with Gabe and Blair again? Uh, probably at some point. They're right here in San Diego, and we've uh, one of our buddies, Paul, actually just played with, uh, with Blair. Played around out with at CMR with him, Carmel Mountain Ranch, local horse, and uh, yeah, I'll probably get out there. <clears throat> First one I get to see live, nice, nice. Welcome, Adam. Hello from Wales, loving the vlogs, Richard. Thank you very much, appreciated. Yeah, hello from uh, Canada, from John. What's up, <laughs> <clears throat> Greg? Yeah, you're welcome for all the good content. Uh, love you guys too, you know. Uh, you, you guys kind of get know what we're all about now. Just trying to create fun videos and uh, show the courses in, in kind of a different way than the, you know what other people are doing. So glad you guys are, are digging them. Let me get that navy hat <laughs> to go with your shirt, Charles. Uh, I think we owe you one anyway. I think you won one of the contests, and uh, we didn't have the small medium, so we'll send one out to you. <laughs> I thought he already had a, a, a gray one, though, didn't he? I see it on his Instagram. Dude, I'm trying to be nice and help oh, okay. them out. Right. <laughs> well, yeah, okay. <laughs> I mean... Uh, Marco, how much did you end up owing Mike at the Par 3 course? Uh, what was, was it? 75. 75? Yeah, 75 bucks. Yeah. That was not a good day for me. He actually <laughs> hit it really well. I just, we ended up making one bet for 50 bucks and I ended you, up winning that one. And yeah. And kind of put me over the top. So. You, you were in by like three feet. You put me on that. <clears throat> Yeah, it was a tight one. All the other guys like struggled to even hit the green or get to the right tier. And of course, you and I are like within you know fifteen twenty footers. Well, I think I hit. Like, we focused up. Yeah. Though. Oh, it was fifty bucks. <laughs> yeah. So I think I hit one like fifteen feet, and he hit one like twenty feet or eighteen yeah. feet. So yeah, it was. Uh, it looked like it was going to get inside of me, but then at the very end, the wind just kind of pushed it away and. Dude, there's some serious wind out there. I mean, I don't. The camera, you know, has the uh, the windscreen on it, so you can't really hear it. But it was blown at a good 25 miles in an hour, maybe 30, at some points. And I think that was one of our funnest, uh, <laughs> you know, days filming. You know, I, I think we were a little bit loose. You know, there were some comments saying that you know we were <laughs> a little bit more chippy, and uh, you know, we had a good time. We were, you know, just enjoying it. You know, it was the last round of the trip, and. We were just kind of sad to see the <laughs> our uh, our golf trip end, and um, so we just you know we went all out. Yeah, we were definitely feeling pretty loose out there. What type and size of grips do you guys use? I just use uh, the standard size, and mine are Golf Pride uh, New Decades. What are you rocking? Um, mine's standard also. I got Golf Pride uh, Tour Velvet uh, grips. There, I've been playing those my whole life, and I just love them. Best drive of 2017, Alex asks. Um, I think mine was at Santa Luz. It was actually on the first hole. Best driver. Oh, best driver of 2017, not best drive. Mm -hmm. Well, best driver, the new M2. Uh, I'm loving that thing. I'm, I'm hitting the new one probably about 10, 12 yards further than the last, the old M2. And I don't, I don't know if it's much so much about the head as it was the shaft for me, but man, I'm just loving that driver right now. Yeah, for me, I, I love the M2. Also, uh, I'm playing it. It's the best driver I've ever owned, and you know, I would highly recommend it. Billy asks, uh, "When's the next giveaway?" We've been doing giveaways uh, quite a bit on Instagram, so if you don't follow us on there, Billy, make sure you check it out. It's uh, just Golfholics. Do a search for it, and uh, we just did one uh, yesterday. Actually, we wrapped one up, so we'll just kind of randomly be doing giveaways mainly on there. 
uh, just because it's a little bit easier to, to keep track of everything. Kevin, <laughs> best golf vlogs going. You guys are beauties. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Appreciate that. I Jet, I uh, love the channel, love you guys. You need to play around with uh, Nade Shot, uh, but any idea on how to hit better iron shots and not thin them? So, yeah, we've been trying to hit up Nade Shot quite a bit on Twitter, and a few of the guys, Charles and, and some of the guys, have been retweeting and constantly pinging him. So, hopefully, we'll be able to get out there with, that, with him. He's got a massive subscriber raise, 3 million on YouTube. So, we'd love to tap into that and, you know, expand the audience. <laughs> Yeah. And it's, can it's, you give him a tip on how to maybe not thin some shots? You know, just keep your head still, keep your body still, you know, uh, ball position is super important. So just take an extra second on, on your setup and make sure that you're uh, in the proper setup and, you know, on an uphill or downhill or side hill lie, you know, all the, if you're one inch off on your, on your setup, it can, you know, drastically, uh, you know, uh, change your ball flight. So just, you know, keep your head still and get your ball position right. TW, hi guys, do you think the drivers have reached their limit or is there still room for improvement from uh, OEMs? I think there's still room for improvement. I mean, they have, uh, I remember when I was in high school, they had like the, you know, non-conforming golf clubs drivers that you were able to hit like 20 yards, 30 yards further. And obviously there's technology that they were using at that time that, you know, wasn't being adapted into the, the stuff that, that is legal. So there's, there's always gonna be new innovations, new, you know, new components. Uh, new materials that are going to be able to be utilized I think that will give you that extra couple yards but I don't know that we'll see such big jumps in improvement it's just going to be small marginal gains probably from here on out but who knows yeah a little shout out to Colin uh, Weinberg um, he, uh, he hit us up and uh, he's a young kid that's playing so keep on grinding out there you know uh, he, I think he uh, he sent over uh, I think it was like a picture of one of his putters or maybe that was somebody else um, I don't know if he's in eighth grade, but um, you know, shout out to Colin. Is Global Golf Online reliable? Have you bought anything from them? Uh, you know, I think my brother has. I think, uh, he's he's you know gotten some good deals out there. So um, yeah, I think it's a, a good site. How do I get an invite to tee it up with you guys and scratch as well? Uh, just shoot us an invite. Let us know where you want to come play, where you want to play at, and uh, we're pretty open to it. Um, some people have hit us up, but a lot of times it's more of a logistical thing where they're not local. So hit us up, and, and we'll see if we can make it happen. Uh, Golf Blogs UK, any knockdown shots this week? <laughs> Uh, yeah, Every other yeah. One. <laughs> pretty much all of my golf shots are knocked down, you know, so when I come and visit you guys over there in the UK, I'll, I'll show you guys how some Americans can uh, play your guys' course and, you know, maybe show you a thing or two. <laughs> uh, what is uh, David Toms? David Toms is basically when you lay it up on a par 5. So David Toms, uh, he famously laid up on a par 4, what was it, the 91 PGA? No, 2001, 2001. PGA. Yeah, he had a, uh, a long par four, I think he had like 215 and he had to carry some water. So I think he went wedge wedge to like nine feet, made the putt and uh, basically just kind of shoved the, uh, all the announcers, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, nephew <laughs> saying that uh, I can still make par by laying up, you know, and they're saying as a professional, 215 yards out of the rough, you should be able to carry. But I think it was Johnny Miller or yeah, know, somebody that was kind of giving him a hard time and he just went out there and played his game and uh, laid up and made his par and won the 2001 uh, PGA. So we call it the David Toms <laughs> and whenever we lay up on a par four or par five, that's David Toms and David Toms it. <laughs> How old were you guys when you both started playing? I was, I think about 16. I was 13, 13. when I first started. What did we think of the US Open? I, I thought it was okay. Um, you know, it was fun watching some of the younger guys just beating the ball, but it's not the type of US Open that I prefer to see. I like to see those guys just, you know, shooting right around even par or breaking par, you know, by one or two shots. And it's not that I want to see them struggle, but I just want to see them having to hit really good shots on every single shot. I mean, when the fairways are 60 yards wide, you know, most people are going to be able to find that fairway. So it, it was cool to see them bombing out there, but it honestly looked like just another PGA Tour event, uh, you know, 16 under won it. So it was still a hard golf course, but not what I would have liked to see. Yeah, I agree with Marco. Uh, it wasn't a traditional US Open course, so 
it didn't appeal to me as much. I still like the venue because it's the U.S. Open, but I don't really like what the, the USGA is doing to the U.S. Opens. I think they need to bring it back to the traditional style. I think they're kind of favoring a lot of the Euros, um, you know, so, you know, if they can bring it back to the U.S. Open style that they used to, I think they'll, the viewership will uh, increase dramatically. Tips for uh, booking Tory Pines? Um, Cush strain. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, they have an online system now. I think you can pay $30. Uh, you just got to get your resident card. And once you do that, you just, you know, I think you can book seven days in advance. So just jump online and do it that way. Or you can just do Dom Patrol out there as well, which is what we used to do a lot of. Now, not as much since we're doing these course <laughs> vlogs, but Dom Patrol is basically getting out there at like 4.35 and uh, standing in line. Because usually the first, I think, hour of tea times or, right, like the first... Yeah, times or, I think before like 8 a.m. that they allow you to, to go out there. And yeah, it's like a first come first serve. So if you're in line, you can you can get out. But you just and if you if you guys ever do Dawn Patrol at Tory, you don't have to actually stand in line at like 5 a.m. What people do is they'll go up there and they'll put a golf club down or your golf bag down. I prefer the golf club just in case someone jacks it. But you put your club and your club holds your spot in line, so you can just go back and hang out in the car with your buddies and then uh, come back right around 6 a.m. when they open. Uh, David Reed, any suggestions on courses to play out in the San Francisco area willing to travel for a great course? You know, Olympics, fantastic. Pasa Tiempo's a little bit outside. Yeah, Harding um, Park. Harding Park, I heard, is fantastic. Um, so, yeah, really any of those courses you can't go wrong with. Yeah, some good ones up there. Ever played in France? No. Would love to, though. Anywhere in Europe, we've never played anywhere outside of the U.S., so. Yeah, <laughs> we're U.S. only right now. <laughs> Brandon Long, tour sauce. Yeah, <laughs> boom. Yeah. We're going we're gonna to get tour sauce put on a shirt and with, a, with a little, uh, I don't know, some kind of icon or something on there. Yeah, we'll sell it on, on our, uh, <laughs> our website. We, have, we do have one uh, shirt that I kind of designed and put on our website, so check it out. It's a, a silhouette of Mike's swing <laughs> and... Uh, it says just a baby knockdown or something like that. Yeah, it was fantastic. Somebody <laughs> uh, sent him an email about it, and that next morning he literally <laughs> just like designed everything, put it on a T-shirt, and threw it on the website. So um, I guess I need to order one of those, right? Yeah, you should go. You should be wearing one right now. I should. Yeah. Said you're wearing this Travis Matthews yeah, on. Yeah, that's Travis Matthews. No, I'm just good, okay. good stuff. <laughs> <clears throat> Favorite course out of Spyglass, Pebble, and Post Tiempo. Spyglass for me. Spyglass for me too. It, of course, was amazing. Yeah, Pasta Tiempo second, and then Pebble third. Brandon said uh, he had his uh, California M qualifier at Santa Luz. Great course, yeah. That, that's fantastic. It is a great course. We play there. It's our home track or his his uh, his home track, but yeah, it's awesome. And then uh, Richard said, any plans in the future to play against Rick and Finch? Yeah, we uh, we would love to. Make sure you guys ping them. Let them know that you guys want to see it and. Uh, we kind of reached out to them. We don't have anything set on the books right now to play with them, but you know, Mark and I were talking about uh, me and uh, me and Rick versus Peter and, and, and Marco. <laughs> so I think that'd be a good matchup yeah, uh, with us, and uh, I'd love to take them down. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not get ahead of ourselves. I'm trying to get down. <laughs> yeah, you are. What happened yesterday, buddy? Oh, take it oh. easy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, yeah, U.S. Open had lowest ratings in history. Do you think? Uh, that's a result of Mike Davis, Davis is introducing new courses and breaking new open tradition tracks. I think that's a part of it. Obviously not having the big three in there, not having Phil in there was another big part of it. And um, I don't know what, and you know, it being on Fox, the comment, the commentating on the US Open was, it was terrible. I mean, like, I just, I, <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. It was just really bad. Like, the way that they were describing some of the shots, um, you know, I, I didn't like it. So... I love the shot tracer. I think that was definitely a nice touch that they should be doing in every tournament, even the regular PGA Tour seasons, like whatever that technology is, they need to figure mm -hmm. out how to make it mobile. Um, guys are doing it in golf videos on YouTube, like they should be they should be doing it professionally yeah. on that level, so. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, my brother's in the house, what's up B? Yeah, what's up Bisky? <laughs> Gene says hello from New York, getting on the subway to work, so I'll miss the rest. Thanks man, thanks for checking in. 
Yeah, Gene, appreciate all the support on the channel, man. Yeah, Brandon Long, Marco, is that a cold Starbucks <laughs> coffee, question mark? Yeah. I didn't know you were so basic, bro. <laughs> yeah, it is. I'm, I'm, I'm basic in some aspects of life, and uh, coffee's one of them. You know, Grande Est Americano with two pumps white mocha. That'll do it. I got this guy hooked on it. He used to never drink uh, coffee. I, I, I never drank coffee for 35 years, and then two years ago, Marco introduced me to it, and now I'm like cracked out on it. <laughs> down dude. Looks like it jumped up. <laughs> New video coming up soon. Um, I'm working on one right now from uh, the Grand Del Mar this course here in San Diego. We haven't done a vlog out there so Mike and I, that was our first uh, first round since we went on the pebble trip so working on that one. Hopefully I'll have something to you guys tomorrow. So Nice and then we played Madeira's yesterday if you guys aren't following us on Instagram which was another amazing course. Uh, Troon, Johnny Miller d design, and uh, it was a super uh, awesome day out there. So that'll be uh, probably out in about two weeks. Yeah, guys, hit the like button on this video if you're enjoying the vlogs and just uh, show, show a little love on there. <laughs> I, I really don't know what the like button does on these live streams, but let's let's see if we you know break 100 what it'll do. <laughs> <laughs> Marco, you put right-handed, but swing lefty. How did that come about? Um, <laughs> so I, when I first started playing golf, I didn't have access to a left-hand putter. And uh, back in the day, I was just kind of loaning clubs from the local range. And that's kind of how I got introduced. And all they had was a righty putter. And when I bought my first set, it you know doesn't come with a putter. It was just the iron set. So I didn't have the money to buy a left-handed putter. And the range I was practicing at, they had a bunch of right-handed putters. So I was, just kept borrowing theirs. and. But, you know, my buddies always wanted to play on the putting green and, and bat a little bit. So I just grabbed whatever was available and stuck to it. And now I'm putting uh, with left hand low on short putts and I'm doing the claw grip on long putts. He's a mess. And it's working great. <laughs> it's working great. I've never seen anything like that in my life, but usually it's the opposite. Usually you go uh, left hand low for long putts and claw for shorter putts, but he's... How was my putting yesterday? It was good. It was phenomenal. It was, it was good. It I had was one three putt yesterday. All right, all right. Take it easy. <laughs> uh, best rain cloud. Uh, what is your vision uh, for the future of the channel? Uh, what plans do you have for developments in format and content? Um, so I think the future of the channel is it's it's kind of hard to say exactly what it's going to be right now, just because we started this as a as a fun passion project. We're not focused on you know the monetary aspect of it. We're not trying to grow it into some kind of you know profit center for us. So we're just making videos that we enjoy, and we're going to keep doing that. And I think sticking to our you know kind of our our core, which is doing course vlogs, and really trying to get out there and play more more courses. Um, and show it to you guys in, in, in hopefully different ways. You know, of course, we'd like to expand that apparel line a little bit more, but I think that's gonna come with time as you know the audience base grows and we're able to move some products. I mean, you guys don't see it, but I got three boxes of hats just sitting around the living room that you know we have to pay a few thousand dollars to have. So it, we just wanna keep doing stuff like that. We wanna keep it giving back to the channel, but also keep it within, uh, within reason, so. Doing collaborations, I think, is going to be another thing that we keep doing more of. That was a lot of fun and, you know, helps grow the channel, so. Yeah, we're both small business owners, so we always try and improve on every little thing. So, you know, any suggestions that you guys have, we're totally open for it. And, um, you know, we're new to this, too, so we're learning as we're going. And, you know, we'll probably continue to make some mistakes, but we'll also improve uh, every video that we do. <clears throat> Just said, uh, give it a look at the photos. And Behind it, behind us. What are they? They're actually photos of uh, of my family. So, yeah. <laughs> Be <laughs> <She got it. laughs> that's not us uh, snoring. That's uh, Brooklyn. That's the dog. I'm trying to. Wake Brooklyn, up you want to come bit. say hi? <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's so. out. Yeah, <laughs> she's did a good one. Uh, Go. Do you want to pick one? Uh, what course would you like to play in the UK? Um, gosh, from Tommy. Um, I don't know. Is uh, I'm trying to think of a good course. I don't know. <laughs> I guess we'll have to get back to you on that one. Any recommendations? Let us know in the comments. And <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't, I don't have a, a course in mind right now. So I guess wherever uh, maybe Peter and Rick play at, somewhere near them would probably be good. 
What are we doing in terms of improvement, practicing, strength and weaknesses? Um, so we haven't been practicing as much lately, but we've been trying to be a little bit more mindful of that. And now that we kind of have a repository of logs that we've shot, but haven't had time to edit yet, it's given us a little bit more free time. So we went to the range uh, day before yesterday and just hit the chip shots. We were just out there for an hour, hour and a half, just chipping around the green and putting. And that stuff just helps a lot. And with both of our games, I mean, I think if the ability to be able to get up and down and make some of those key putts is the difference for me from shooting in the 80s versus in the 70s. You know, if I have two, three less three putts, it's going to make a big difference to my round and same for Mike. So I think that's kind of what we've been focusing on. Uh, Golf Vlogs UK, uh, I am into the TaylorMade TP5s now. Great ball. Yeah, it's the ball that I think I'm going to be sticking with and I haven't found a better one for the price. So definitely recommend those balls. Dave asks, uh, how's my son doing? Uh, thanks for, uh, thanks for, you know, giving a little love to Elon there, Dave. He's doing great. He's just getting bigger. We just got him signed up for gymnastics. So he's been doing that and man, it's, uh, he's loving it. He's burning a lot of energy in there. Just running around with the kids. My son's two and a half, which you guys don't know if uh, you haven't seen any of the other videos from my personal channel, but, um, yeah, kids just growing. He loves Legos right now too, which is a lot of fun for me because I grew up playing with Legos, um, and you know, so we're just building fun stuff. And, and he's talking a ton, so having a blast. Mom's coming out here uh, probably in about a week and a half. She can't wait to see him. So he loves Grandma. And she always brings him toys. <laughs> he doesn't love Grandma. I know, right? <laughs> uh, Stephen asks Marco, can you bring back the the low level slow motion shots in the course vlogs? Yes. We um, started shooting the last couple of videos a little bit differently. We're focusing more on keeping the camera stable and getting, we're going to introduce the shot tracer in almost in pretty much every tee shot. And we're going to do less zooming with the lens because what we found is that our zoom lens just isn't, doesn't zoom far enough. And uh, we do like the slow-mo shots too, which for whatever reason we kind of stopped doing them. But the last video that we shot, we had quite a few slow-mo shots in there. So you guys will see some of those. Yeah, we're mixing it up a little bit. <laughs> uh, Luke asked, uh, hey guys, what was the final sum of money after the par three vlog? Uh, 75 bucks my way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, favorite public and favorite private course in SD? I mean, public, I gotta go with uh, Torrey Pines. I mean, it's pretty tough to beat. And for private course, gosh, I guess I'm kind of biased for Santa Luz, but yeah, I'm gonna just say Santa Luz. I'm paying the dues, so I gotta, I gotta <laughs> say it. Uh, Torrey Pines for me, public and then private. Um, I'm gonna have to say Palma Valley, Santa Luz, and the farms are probably mm -hmm. a, a tie for my my three. So we just hit 100 uh, people in our uh, live chat. Boom. Nice job, guys. Hit that like button, guys. Let's, uh, I don't know where it's at. Does it show us anywhere? What I don't think so. I don't think we can see that. Yeah, that's weird that it wouldn't display it. Well, whatever it is, let's get it up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Sam asked, uh, what's the most money you've ever lost or gained in a round? Um, I, I got a chance to play in a big money game uh, over at the, the Del Mar Country Club. It's, it's a wolf game, and uh, I think I lost like 2400 on a hole one day. And then uh, I made a comeback, and I ended up winning eighteen hundred on the last hole to win nine hundred. So I was down, I, you know, I was down nine hundred going into uh, eighteen, and then I made birdie and I won eighteen hundred bucks, and um, that was my biggest uh, payday. <laughs> what, what's the one at Bel Air where the guy didn't pay out? Okay, so was that one bigger? Um, yeah, that was big. So I played in a huge money game with um, Bel. It was a couple guys from Bel Air Country Club. I got invited to uh, play in the, the money game with like Joe Pesci and a few other guys. I think I was 21 or 22, so my game was pretty solid at the time. And the guy... Um, you were with your dad, right? I was with my dad. We were at a wedding. Um, the, the family's uh, brother was playing in the money game, basically kind of got drunk, talked a little trash to me, said, hey, if you want to play in it, you know, let us know. It's $10,000 a side. So 10 on the front, 10 on the back, and 10 total. And then if you wanted to press you can. Uh, usually two down auto presses was, was the key. So um, I obviously didn't have that kind of money. So I had asked my dad if he was going to back me up. So to make a long story short, I think I shot like 69 that day and I won six ways. So he owed me $60,000. <laughs> so, um, but the guy didn't pay up. Yeah. So the guy yeah. reneged on that 60K, gave me $60 instead of the 60K. 
uh, my dad almost lost his, you know what, and uh, I came yeah. home and it was a big fiasco. The wedding was the next day, so we didn't want to like cause like a controversy with the wedding, so we just kind of sucked it up and um, it was not a, not a good day for, <laughs> for that. So, But you know, in, in a money game and playing for those kind of stakes, it was definitely uh, pressure filled and you know, taught me a lot and helped me mature as a golfer. I think uh, you know, whenever I play for money, uh, I always play a little bit better and I focus up and it's, it's always good. So Hogan says, uh, I used to naturally draw the ball, but have since, uh, through some swing changes, started hitting a fade. Any thoughts on how to hit a draw? I mean, this guy's the, the best draw hitter in the biz, so I'll let him answer that You know, one. it's just like ping pong, you know, when you put top spin on it, you gotta rotate your right hand. It's the same thing for golf, so just make sure when you're at impact, you're rotating through the golf ball, and when you're playing a fade, you're kind of cutting across it, so the spin rate goes to the right, so just make sure that you come over the ball a little bit more. Keep it a little bit more inside, keep that right elbow in, and uh, you should be fine. And another way to do it, and I, that's that works for Mike, but for me, when I want to try to play a draw, I literally will just rotate the club a little bit more closed, and I will take the exact same swing, and that nat that also can put a draw on it. So there's a few different ways you can play a draw, and just kind of find what way works best for you. Love the logs, guys. I'm always waiting for the not notification to pop up. Wish the courses here looked like uh, the ones that we all play. One TPC, Southwind. Yeah, we got some amazing courses. I mean, we're so lucky to be in SoCal. It's, um, you know, even Palm Springs area, which we haven't even explored yet with the, with the course logs, but we've played out there a ton. I grew up out in that area. There's, you know, probably two dozen courses that we can go out there and play that will blow you guys away. So we got a lot of big plans for, uh, for you guys. Uh, Henry asked, uh, any advice for a young guy, 24, that wants to start a business, please don't say don't do it. No, absolutely oh. not. Totally do it. Do um, it, yeah. You know, whatever business it is, you know, sit down, reevaluate, you know, your market, what you can do with it. You know, for me, I, you know, my limo biz, I probably should have done things a little bit different, but I, I, I bought a limo, I went to work, I learned the hard way, I made a lot of mistakes, and I grinded out those first few years. I probably should have started with a company, learned the trade, then start my own company. That was my mistake, but... In the end, it you know it all it all paid off, and and now I'm you know 12 years into my business, and it's fantastic, and allows us to do what we love to do, which is you know this golf channel, play golf, coach kids, um, and give back as much as possible. So yeah, go for it. Yeah, and for me, same thing. I mean, for me, I, I've always had a side hustle. You know, even when I worked at any company, I always was working on something on the side, building up websites, just trying to learn any way that I can, and uh, I kind of sacrificed. The kind of going out and partying and doing all that stuff that my friends were doing and I put that time into just educating myself and I dropped out of college and I went straight into working and creating these websites and learning how to sell them and I think the biggest thing is just go out there and start doing it you know a lot of people they overthink stuff they overanalyze it and they don't take action and I think the biggest thing is just take action you'll learn from your mistakes and uh, just keep going down that path and you're gonna fail a lot of times in life, but eventually, you know, you're going to figure it out and you're going to have that moment where it all starts clicking and it all starts working. It's, it's the best feeling in the world. And then if you just keep doing that throughout your whole life, you're going to be successful. So, you know, Marco said he's got a side hustle, but his, his, his whole life is a hustle. <laughs> so don't let him kid you. You know, he, he's a doer. He gets things done. You know, anything that you need, the guy, you know, pretty much does it. Um, Brandon said, Mike, do you hit a knockdown drivers off the tee? <laughs> Asking for a friend. Yeah, I do. Um, sometimes I hit a little bunt just to make sure I hit one 260 down the middle, 250 yep. if I need to. Um, you know, I, I try and uh, just make sure I, position is the most important thing. And you guys will see with uh, the vlog that's coming up at the Grand Del Mar, um, I hit 13 out of 14 fairways. It was one of my best driving days. And, you know, I saw a lot of danger and I just, you know, I shortened up my swing. I reduced it a little bit and I just... I went for, you know, basically the fairway versus trying to, you know, overpower the golf course and it paid off and I played pretty well that day. Daniel asks, uh, are we happy with the clubs in our bags right now? Are we looking to make any changes? I love the clubs that are in my bags right now. Those new 770 irons that I got. At first I thought the long irons were going to be a little bit tough, but I, I just went out and practiced them a little bit and man, everything feels great right now. I'm not going to be making any changes anytime soon. And for me, I've got those Callaway Apex uh, forged irons, and, and I love them right now. But if TaylorMade, you know, wanted to invite me up and <laughs> hook me up with a set, I I would definitely switch, you know. <laughs> but right now, I'm gonna stick with my Apex, 
And my, my driver three wood combo for TaylorMade is fantastic, so yeah. New video is coming up probably tomorrow. We'll have a new video. It's going to be the first video from after our Pebble trip. So uh, it's going to be from the Grand Del Mar. We actually played out there with a couple of buddies uh, of mine that I, I work with, but they also are golf fanatics. So they came in town. So you guys will see that video hopefully tomorrow. Uh, Beach Frazier said Rick and Peter are playing the open qualifier on Monday. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. I wish those guys the best of luck. I hope they qualify and they play well out there. It seems like they're both really great players and um, hopefully they can do it. Uh, my brother asked, uh, what do we think about the, uh, the Bones, uh, Phil Mickelson split? You know, I'm, I'm kind of, I think I've got mixed reviews on that. It seems like those two were perfect for each other. I'm sure there's something that happened, you know, over the years and maybe it just hasn't been brought up, but uh, you know, um, you know, uh, it sounds like they split, you know, amicably. So, dude, there um, are so many comments in here. Oh my <laughs> gosh, you guys are awesome, by the way. Yeah, we got over 100 people. Yeah, th thank you. I like, I'm scrolling through this and I can't even figure out where we were because right there. Wow, oh, yeah, let's go down a little bit more. Okay, okay, you're blowing this up. So, yeah, I think Phil and Bones will end up being fine, they'll you know carry on and do their thing. So, who's he gonna put on the back? I, I know it's his brother right now, Tim, yeah. but it's gonna be interesting to see who he puts on there. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's funny that they were mentioning in that uh, in the email or the the press conference that they did that uh, he had like one veto card. He didn't use it yet for like the club selection that Phil makes. Mm -hmm. So Bones had like one. He gets it once a year. He gets to say, "No, you're not hitting this club. You're hitting what I'm telling you." <laughs> I love it. I love That's so it. cool. I feel like I should do that with you. <laughs> yeah, you tried to do that yesterday, and I had to call you off. Yeah. Of it. Okay. I, <laughs> You know, he made a great swing with a club that he shouldn't have hit, and it worked out for him one time. And Once. He just, and, he, and won't, uh, maybe twice. Okay, maybe twice. But other than that, I'm like 99%, you know, picking the right club. But he did kind of swing, uh, he, he changed his swing a little bit yesterday. He was I actually did. firing his glutes, and he was hitting the ball a little further, so he, you know, he clubbed up. Yeah. So. so are you carrying two putters, Marco? No, never, never have been. Uh, I just have the 6M. That's the only putter that I own at this at this time. I sold the old putter, um, so. <laughs> oh, Fran, great question, but we can't answer that one. This is a family friendly uh, operation, so I like the question. <laughs> oh, you guys are funny, dude. What's up, Eminem? <laughs> how much? How many... You guys are killing me. All right, Preston asked, uh, what advice do you have for juniors that are really into golf and want to get better? I love the channel, huge inspiration. Thanks, man. Um, just get out there and play. Go to your local course, work on your game, put in the time, you know, spend an hour on your putting, spend an hour on chipping, and an hour on striking your golf balls. You know, find somebody that you uh, have similar body types to or swings that you enjoy. Follow them on, you know, YouTube or, you know, find, you know follow Rick or uh, Pete. Um, they both have great channels that, that teach uh, the golf game and just get out there and play. Yeah, I think the biggest thing for me was when I was growing up was just finding, making friends of the guys that are already playing out there uh, instead of trying to convert friends that you know don't want to play golf. Go out there and make some new friends, guys that like to play it, that are passionate about it, and th that alone will just kind of give you more ways to get out there, more reasons to get out there and hit the golf ball around and like Mike said, just have fun with it. One person asked uh, if we had any advice for Torrey Pine South, they were going to play it. Um, I don't know how thick the rough is right now, but make sure you watch your ball. Like you can lose your ball in the rough out there. It's happened to me multiple times. So sometimes I hit a shot and I'm like, ah, oh, it's fine. And then I get out there and I can't find it. So just keep an eye on it. And then uh, everything breaks towards the ocean. So even if a putt looks flat at Tory, just look at where the water is and just assume that it's gonna go towards the water. Yeah. Alex asked, uh, any tips to stay calm during a round? You know, I think breathing is an undervalued asset for, for most players, you know, if you, because everyone's going to have nerves, everyone's going to be, you know, anxious on certain shots. You know, for me, I take a deep breath every single time, in through the nose, out through the mouth. Just use your uh, yoga breath, you know, <laughs> that's what I would recommend. Just take a deep breath and you'll be fine. Do we get our clubs for free at the Kingdom? <laughs> I wish. I wish. <laughs> yeah, that would have been nice. <laughs> no. 
Uh, Joseph said, uh, just want to say that your vids are so effing high quality and well edited. Thanks, Joseph. Appreciate it, man. <clears throat> uh, Desmond Cox, do you compete in any local or statewide tournaments? Not really. Uh, we're going to do the member guest in September, uh, but other than that, our competition days are pretty much uh, done. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much the country club events, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Which, well, actually, we have a pretty good uh, win streak in those things. Yeah, we have done pretty I think well. we've done... We've First or in, second every yeah, time. we played in like five of them, and we've placed almost every time. Yeah. Maybe there was one time I think we were out, so... As long as those guys aren't sandbagging their I handicaps. Know. You know, this guy is like the most honest guy in the world, so <laughs> his handicap is exactly the way it should be. <laughs> I post my score right after the race. Right after. <laughs> Uh, that's a three folks par from Charles. <laughs> Mike's response to the first Remember hole. Remember did the... <laughs> oh yeah, had me laughing. Yeah, we, you know what, the par three, we just kind of got loose and we just had yeah. a good time and we, you know, just got a little, little, uh, little chippy out there with the cameras and, you know, we had a good time. So, you know, a little bit more of, you know, how Mark we really and I are. are on the golf course. Yeah. So, I'm sure he has to edit. <laughs> Most well, of the stuff out. I mean, you guys probably know, just like you are out there with your friends. I mean, we're not perfect. A lot of the guys that were with us, you know, we cuss out there and we'll say stuff that, you know, we don't want to put on the channel because we don't want to, you guys to think that this is how we are all the time. But, you know, you get mad, you, <laughs> you, you, you hit a bad shot. Sometimes you say something, you know, just uh, at that moment. And so we cut a lot of that stuff out, but that is part of our personality and who we are on the golf course. And, uh, that's also why it's such a good stress reliever, right? I mean, it's <laughs> why a lot of people like to be out there is you just, you know, you get it out. So, yeah, um, we don't put it in there, but you guys got to see a little piece of that in the part three. My brother asked, uh, UK equals St. Andrews, kid. Come on. <laughs> yeah, you're right. St. Andrews. All right. I'm oh, sorry. He's just, laughing you yeah. down. Uh, you're right. St. Andrews would be the course that we would play over there. <laughs> um, Dave, uh, congrats, man. He's about to have his first son. Yeah, um, I, I'm still waiting to get Elon in the range. We went out there and hit some balls, just like the plastic ones and stuff, and he just loves being outside. So, yeah, hopefully you can get uh, your son out there and, uh, you know, continue the tradition of golf. Joseph asked, um, what course did we like better, Spyglass or Pebble? It was Spyglass. Uh, we loved it. Um, C-A-S-P, love your channel. Thanks, dude. Appreciate it. <laughs> Interesting to have West Coast guys dropping biggie samples in your background music. <laughs> Where's the two clock? <laughs> oh, we love them both. God, yeah. <laughs> we're not, yeah. We're not biased to either one. I love both of them, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, biggie, Tupac can't go wrong. With those I'd put more Tupac and biggie in there if uh, YouTube didn't slap us down with, you know, the violations of, like, the whole copyright thing, so. Christopher Baker, been watching from the start, uh, the Golf Channel uh, guys, keep up the awesome work. Thanks, Christopher. Thanks for all the loyalty and the support, <laughs> man. Appreciate it. I uh, think we should get more networking with uh, Shields, Finch, and Crossfield. So Crossfield, we heard, doesn't do any collabs with people. You guys let me know if we're wrong, but this, like, you know, some of the other guys that we did collabs with, this is what they told us. So I think he's out of the picture, but I think Shields and, and Finch, love to do more with them. And uh, yeah, keep growing the, the subscriber base, so. Yeah, Beach, uh, Frazier, you know, we did one with Finch uh, about a month or so ago, so, you know, if you haven't seen it, check it out. <clears throat> Is your Instagram chat notification turned on? Because if I send a message, the phone will show light. Hmm. Not sure what he's talking about. Gene said, hey, Mike, rub it in again. How much did you win off Marco? <laughs> oh, oh, Gene. Oh, mm. love it. Thanks, Ben. Mm. Uh, 75 bucks my way. <laughs> oh, Gene. Oh, appreciate it. <laughs> Cush strain, 60K to 60 bucks. You got scammed, <laughs> my man. I know, man. It, it was a tough one to swallow, and... Uh, yeah, it's unfortunate, but sometimes, you know, it's a learning lesson. <laughs> Give me the guy's address, I'll go get your buddy. <laughs> <He's pretty sad. laughs> oh, you know what? I probably could look it up. <laughs> it's up in the L.A. area, though. <laughs> okay, so JJ said, okay, I had a situation. I took my girlfriend golfing yesterday, and when I went to use the bathroom after an hour, when I came back, the dude was, there was a dude teaching my girlfriend... <laughs> How to golf. Golf spoon. Should I break up with her? <laughs> You're um, going to have to make the call on that, but 
I'm gonna go with uh, it's not looking good for you. <laughs> <laughs> or you just beat up the guy that's teaching your girl. Either one. <laughs> yeah, but that doesn't teach her a lesson. Don't do that. <laughs> but if she's flirting with someone else while she's on a date with you, probably not a good sign. Really injured my lower left back. If you guys experienced uh, similar injuries, uh, the only injury I've had was probably about a year ago. I kind of had like a tennis elbow. I was playing a lot of tennis and golf, and uh, I was just having a really bad pain on my left arm, and then it started happening on my right, right around the elbow area, and I could not swing a golf club or a tennis club or you know racket. So I just had to take basically a couple of months off from any of that kind of activity. So obviously with the back, it's much different. You use it a lot so can't really advise on that yeah i've had some lower back injuries some neck injuries um shoulder injuries uh, i grew up wrestling so i've got a couple uh surgeries under my belt and uh, driving all the time with my back definitely yeah. kind of wears on me and you know not enough time in the gym and strengthening my core so um Fr fran asked uh, mike any good bachelorette party stories from the limo <laughs> bez man i could i could talk to you for hours about some of the stories I got and you probably wouldn't believe them but they're they're fantastic <clears throat> man you asked uh, man you TV asked if we we're gonna play in Germany anytime soon love to man throw us an invite and uh, maybe we'll come out there and play a little bit I'd love to visit Germany um, Justin asked where can I get cheap nice clubs you know uh, tailormadepreown.com or callawaypreown.com are are good uh, sources even or eBay or eBay yeah, yeah. Any Vegas trips on tap? <laughs> Ryan, you're out there right now, aren't you? I think we're friends on Facebook. I thought I saw you playing uh, TPC, uh, TPC Vegas. But um, I think we're gonna, the next time I'm gonna be in Vegas is gonna probably be in January. I got a conference out there every year that I go for, so that was actually the thing that sparked this year's video in January and what started this whole channel. So I might go back out there in January and play some golf. Uh, Thomas Barker asked, uh, me and Mike versus Marco in a US Open winner. Uh, absolutely, yeah. Uh, for those of you guys that don't know, we're gonna go out to Florida, go play with Thomas, and uh, we won't tell you who the U.S. Open winner is uh, on the channel, but uh, we're gonna keep the suspense uh, as much as possible, and uh, we're gonna take down a U.S. Open winner. Yeah. And thank you, Thomas. Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> Thomas, thank you for the invite. Uh, Mike's been talking about it nonstop. He's super pumped. I am as well. So we can't wait to come out to Florida and uh, play with you and some of those other guys. Yeah. It's gonna be a blast. This guy's like, I'm gonna pla practice, you know, five days a week, so he can try to beat some of those pros. Which, you know, who knows? We'll see. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna put some work in my game and uh, hopefully come out there and fire a good low number with you, and uh, we'll take these guys down for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd love oh, to have a U.S. Open winner buy me dinner. To be honest, <laughs> uh, keep talking shit. Uh, Go to baby. <laughs> <laughs> good. Maybe you should practice a little bit more too. <laughs> oh. oh man. <laughs> Steven uh, Carrier asked, well, what was with the divot cam on the part three course? Well, it, it's kind of complicated, but uh, with the gimbal, uh, trying to rotate the, the zoom is kind of tough. So we kind of, we zoom down and then we zoom up once we, <laughs> once we get going. So yeah, you guys got to see some divots flying on that. On that. So, yeah. There you go. Nice fillets coming up out of the ground. <laughs> I thought it was kind of nice. I liked it. I'm going to try to walk onto the Texas A&M golf team. Should I vlog my process? Joshua asks. I'm gonna say no to that. You better focus up if you're gonna walk on, you know, work on your game. Don't worry about the vlog process because it's it definitely takes away uh, your focus. Yeah. <clears throat> do we go to anyone for uh, for instructions or do we try to work on our own issues or on our own swing? We basically work on our on our own games. I mean, Mike's helped me the most, and he knows his own game pretty well. I don't. Know that if you get advice from anyone, but you know, <laughs> I pretty much get it from this guy. <laughs> no, I, I've never taken a lesson in my life, and uh, I don't think I ever will unless it's you know somebody that I you know really want to work with. Maybe a short game guru like Dave Peltz or something like that, or Dave Stockton Jr. for putting. Uh, he came out one time and gave a, a lesson to the kids, which was awesome. And uh, yeah, as far as uh, taking any lessons, I don't I don't foresee that happening. <clears throat> Charlie Russell Goff, your guys' scrambling helps my game when I'm struggling on a hole. Some of your shots are insane. Yeah, uh, thank you. You know, we just practice our short game probably the most out of anything. So we know that if you can get up and down, you can save a lot of rounds with that. So I think we both have put a lot of emphasis on it. 
And it's also a fun one where you can go out and just, we can hit chip shots and we can gamble. So it's just like putting, it's really easy to kind of create little games around it. So that's probably why our short game is uh, as good, good, good as it is. Uh, Dave said, love the new blue hat. The color blue is sick. Yeah, it's awesome. Go ahead and uh, jump on, uh, on the channel and uh, there's a link in the description. You can pick up one of these hats and we'll ship it out. Shop.golfholics.com. You guys can pick one up. I don't have the, the uh, photos updated yet, but you guys can see what it looks like here. <laughs> I don't think they need it. <laughs> Where in Florida are we going to? Uh, we're going to head to TPC Sawgrass. That's where Thomas is a member at. So we're going to go out there and play with a couple of the PGA guys, hopefully, and um, just have a great uh, golf trip. You know, it seems like uh, that's like one of the golf meccas of the world. And um, if Thomas can set up uh, the U.S. Open winner and a few other guys, it would it would make for the greatest vlogs of all time. So you know, <laughs> it's gonna be uh, awesome. we got. I mean, me and Mark would talk a lot of trash, but we have a ton of respect for you know, all those PGA guys and what they have to go through and all the travel and playing good golf. And so it'd be an honor to, to play with some of those guys and uh, it, it'd be really enjoyable for us to, to experience that, so. Robert Davis asks, uh, what do we do for a living? We're both small business owners. Mike owns a limo company. I own an online media company and I got some other side hustles as well. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love the Q&A sessions, been at each one. Thank you for that, Nicholas. Uh, what's coming up in the next few weeks? Uh, we got more course vlogs. We already have shot three course vlogs since the Pebble trip, so I'm gonna be working on editing those. Um, we played one course that you guys have already seen and two new courses that you guys have not seen. Uh, all three are here in the San Diego area, so we're also gonna, we've been talking to uh, a company in uh, Vista, California, which is just a little bit north of where we live. It's still here in San Diego, but they invited us out to play a golf course out there. And uh, we're looking at doing something to help them promote their company. So it's, uh, they basically agreed to doing a, a giveaway on the channel. And we're going to basically do a course vlog and do a giveaway on top of it. So it's like a wedge company. So I think you guys will like that. Plus, you know, some free stuff going out. Yeah, Chris uh, just said that, uh, good morning from Australia. What's up, man? <laughs> Top of the morning. Um, Matthew asks how to make a divot. Please help. Matt, dude, you don't have to make a divot. Have you ever seen some of my shots? I just picked that thing right off the ground. Yeah, he's a picker. It's a, <laughs> yeah. But if you want to make a divot, just stay down on it and compress the ball. You know, keep that club face nice and closed down and keep your body nice and stable and just head down. And, you know, as long as you're staying down on the ball, you should be able to get a divot, divot off out of it. So, yeah, it's pretty simple. Uh, thought about Nicholas asked. Uh, thought about doing hat giveaways in the future. So far, I have no luck with uh, the golf balls. Thanks, guys. Well, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of people that are uh, leaving messages and tagging people, and you know, obviously, we can't we can't hit up everybody and can't give away balls to everyone. But um, yeah, we can do hat giveaways for you guys too. So that that won't be a problem. Thomas Barker says we are playing for head shaves. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> oh yeah, man. Okay, that's I'm down. Uh, I am not down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not down. <clears throat> Scroll down. Henry says, if you guys shouldn't use my shirt, you at least send me a hat. <laughs> Henry, I made the shirt for you, man. Yeah, how about <laughs> you? Gave me the idea. <laughs> yeah. I executed. <laughs> A million dollar uh, closest to the pin from Isaac. Yeah, that's that's a little bit too much, man. If you want to sponsor it, we'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Room for one more on the sawgrass trip. I think we're we got a foursome, right? No, yeah. sorry guys, there's no uh, invitees on that one. It's just going to be us, Thomas, and uh, one of the PGA guys, and we're going to play with Thomas's uh, 14 year old too, and uh, it's going to be me and uh, the kid versus Marco and Thomas, and uh, we're going to have to take you guys down too. <laughs> Are we worried about uh, the 17th Sawgrass yet? No. Not at all. It's what, no. 125 yards? Yeah, I feel like I'm going to I'll hit that right-handed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just kidding. Uh, Luke asked, uh, what's your pre-round warm-up routine? I hit like five wedges, five seven irons, <laughs> and five drivers. That's pretty much mine. I hit about 10 of uh, the same clubs. And then we go roll some putts, usually. 
Um, Tim asked, uh, you should play San Diego Country Club. Yeah, we're, we're in the process of setting that up probably in the next few weeks, so stay tuned for that one. It should be a good, good course vlog. <clears throat> um, Fran asked, uh, any golfaholic, <laughs> it's golfaholics, but uh, groupies yet? Uh, women, not dudes, of course. Yeah, well, let's start one. Um, reach out to us privately and, uh, We'd love to. Uh, it seems like from the analytics, we've got like 98% men. So yeah. uh, we'd like to step up our women game and uh, maybe even, you know, put out some visors or some other things that you guys might like and want to represent. So, yeah, reach out. <clears throat> All right. So, uh, so Louie asks, he said, instead of raffling off hats or balls, why not do a raffle for uh, two spots to play with with us? It, we could totally do that. If you guys would rather, you know, us give away, a, you know, a round with us, you'd have to fly yourself to San Diego, though. We're not going to cover that, but you know, maybe we could pick up a round or something, depending on where we're playing. Um, totally be open to it. I think that'd be a lot of fun. I I personally want to meet a lot of the guys and and gals that are you know accommodating and sharing our videos and helping us and supporting <laughs> us. And uh, I know we've talked about it multiple times about doing like a little golf holics invitational once the channel is big enough and uh, I've been thinking a lot about that and really excited about it so hopefully we can get those numbers up and then uh, eventually make that happen maybe next year I already talked to Santa Luz and they said they're totally on board with having us all out there and uh, I still need to get the pricing on it but we can negotiate that so it's, uh, it's exciting stuff uh, I was asked, uh, hey Mike, any idea if Spyglass sells those 50th anniversary ball markers to anyone? I'd love one. Yeah, I'm guessing that they do online. So maybe jump on their uh, their website and see if they sell those. Um, they're awesome ball markers. Love it. What do we uh, concentrate on during our short game practice? Um, I mean, for me, it's depending on where we're, where we're playing, the type of shot we're hitting, but it's just the landing zone. I try to pick a target and I try to land the ball in that in that zone and then I watch what it, the ball does how it releases and kind of adjust after that and I just try to take a mental note of like how much rollout am I getting with how open or closed the club face is so we were, when we were practicing two days ago there was a pin there was a green that we were hitting to it was incredibly small and the pins were really tucked and I couldn't hit the little low bump and runs that Mike's good at so I was playing these crazy flop shots but I was doing really well with them because I was able to find that zone and just continuously hit into it. So that's what I think about when I'm practicing short games, just getting into that zone and, and being mindful of what the ball's doing. Uh, Charlie asked Sherwood Country Club or Riviera anytime soon. Um, so we're gonna have to hold off on Riviera just because they punched the greens recently. So it's gonna be a few weeks, maybe even a couple months. Um, we're gonna try and do it when the greens are perfect out there and uh, you know, it works out for our schedules. So, yeah. Do you guys practice golf at home? Uh, no. We usually have pretty good weather here so we're able to jump out and there's a lot of courses around here even if Santa Luz is closed for maintenance, we usually will go out to like uh, Oaks North, which is a executive course here in San Diego, and actually a really good one if you guys are ever visiting here for for the money, it's it's well worth it. The greens are always in great shape, but we'll go out there and hit some shots, and that's actually where we practiced the other day. Yeah. All right, guys, we're gonna do two more questions, and then we're gonna shut it down. And uh, so fire away. All right. So Tim asked, uh, reach out to Tania. Uh, she does the trick shot girl, um, and has a ton of followers. Yeah, maybe a ping her and let her know that uh, we'd love to play with her. She seems like a really good. Uh, kid and uh, she has awesome trick shots. So yeah, it'd be fun to play with her. She seems like a cool person too. Fran asks Paige or Michelle Wee. Uh, Michelle Wee for sure. I think Paige, you know, she's a good girl. She's trying to make it and uh, you know, she's got a lot going for herself. But I think Michelle, you know, she's really committed to the game and improving uh, kind of and she's on that next level as well. So she seems to be less focused on the show social media kind of popularity contest and more on on getting better and growing the game so my, my vote is Michelle yeah I'll, I'll go with Michelle too um, last one uh, Luke said give us green sh uh, green keepers a shout out yeah we love greens keepers man <laughs> yeah. when I was growing up I always wanted to be a greens keeper I thought I, I, I would you know it would be perfect for me because you know reading greens checking out the grass you know uh, trying different types of uh, venues to, you know, change the grass around, POA, bent, you know, fescue, like all, all the different types. I mean, I'm, 
I love it. You know, I wish I was a little more knowledgeable with it. And um, yeah, thank you for uh, all the all the work you guys do. Maduro's has golf boards. Yeah, they do. Uh, oh, we should have taken them. How? With all of our equipment? We could have managed. It would have, it would have been hot. Too. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It was like, yeah. So. All right, guys. So we're going to shut it down right now. Thank you again for joining us. Uh, we're going to do the live stream again next week. Same time, same channel. <laughs> and uh, hopefully you guys can join us back. And we'll have some new videos coming up tomorrow. And uh, I'm not going to be posting videos on the weekend just because we noticed that on the analytics, very few people see them. And... Uh, so it's going to be a Monday through Friday kind of posting, not every day, but I'm going to try to get up as many as I can during the, the weekday. So hopefully you guys are cool with that. And again, thank you for all the, the love and the support. Yeah. And if you guys haven't uh, already, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. We're going to be doing most of our giveaways on there and uh, hit us a thumbs up for this vid. And uh, thank you guys for all the support.